Last year, the Giants' defense was so bad that it really cost them a ton of wins. Has it been a problem again this year? And people also were kind of worried about uh, the Giants' run scoring capabilities coming into the year. Has that been an issue? It's the All-Star break, which means it's time to take a step back and look at the team as a whole. And it's an interesting mix of unexpected performances uh, with veterans and youth, uh, maybe even some unexpected use. We'll get into it all next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts, including YouTube. Check us out there. Hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. And coming up on today's show, as I alluded to in the open there, there's a lot that we can get into as we take a step back with this all-star break. By the way, the Giants, their two representatives, Camilo Duvall and Alex Cobb, helped the NL get a win. We're not going to do a whole episode on that, but Duvall, man, he was nasty and struck out Julio Rodriguez. Anyway, uh, that was fun. But I want to just, today we're going to evaluate the position player group for the Giants. We're going to look at pitchers either tomorrow or on Friday as the, you know, second half picks up again on Friday, but yeah, so the position player mix. Like I said, defense was such a problem last year and I think people were still concerned about it this year, so we'll get into that. But just the overall group before kind of talking about the defense. When we look at something like wins above replacement, I think a lot of people maybe don't understand fully what goes into it and there's sometimes people are resistant to use it and they think it's useless or whatever but typically I think people who think it's useless maybe just don't understand it and what it basically is doing is just saying there's different elements to a baseball team there's hitting there's defense there's base running and we want to try to combine all of those things into one number and that's all really that war is attempting to do and so if we look at the, the most zoomed out kind of number we can look at wins above replacement overall by the Giants position players this season, good, bad, or indifferent, all their, you know, everybody. The Giants are at 13.1 fan graphs wins above replacement, which is the ninth most in Major League Baseball. So yes, overall, their position player mix with all the ups and downs, with all the injuries, they have been ninth overall. And the way that they've done that, they're they're hitting, if you look at weighted runs created plus, which is an all-encompassing offensive metric, for a long time, the Giants were rating here as an, a like well above average offensive team, maybe like 5% above average, which is pretty good. There's not a lot of teams that are much higher than that. Like right now, the Tampa Bay Rays are first. Actually, they're tied with the Texas Rangers with a team weighted runs created plus of 122, meaning about 22% above average. And the Giants, they're only at 101, but they were they were higher than that earlier. And I think the injuries have a lot to do with, do with it. And if we look, you know, there's some players that are doing great. There's some players that haven't done great. So the overall number, you know, it doesn't tell the whole story, but They've been an above average offensive team, but not by a whole lot. And if we just look at, if you want to go something real, real simple here, we can just discuss runs per game. The Giants are scoring on average 4.62 runs per game, which is the 10th most in Major League Baseball. And so it's not, I mean, that's own, it's, uh, that's honestly a little bit surprising given that the uh, weighted runs created plus is just 101, meaning about league average. Uh, the league average runs per game is 4.57. And again, the Giants are at 4.62. So that's pretty darn close to the league average. But uh, Oracle Park is, well, it's become more neutral with the changes to the dimensions. I don't buy that 
there's some kind of weather pattern changes or something with the with the right field wall and all that. I think maybe just the changes to the dimensions have helped a little bit and given you some extra damage to center field. But let's just go into the numbers behind this uh, 101 weighted runs created plus. The Giants have hit as a team 248, and I think there's a tendency still, and I discussed this so much last year, to look at a 240-something batting average and assume that that's bad. But we need to look at what is the league average in today's day and age. And the, the major league average batting average this season is 248. And isn't that exactly what I said the Giants are at? Yes, 248. The Giants have exactly a league average batting average. But the Giants have a 323 team on base percentage, and the league average is 320. And so a little bit above average with on base, which means basically... Probably, I mean, they could be getting hit by more pitches. We'll look at that too, but that they're they're walking more than the average team. The league average slugging percentage is 410, and the Giants are at 407. And this is kind of, the ballpark can influence a number like slugging percentage. And so, you know, but in reality, they, they were a team that was hitting a lot of homers early, but they kind of fell off with that over the last month plus. And so... Basically, the overall offensive line looks roughly average to me, and that's what this 101 weighted runs created plus is saying. And like when I tell you this is the average average, this is the average on base, and this is the average slugging, the Giants are right in line with like they're a little bit above average and on base, a little bit below average in the slug, but the average is average, if that makes sense. So yeah, that checks out for me. How about the strikeouts? I think the strikeouts were a big... uh, concern to a lot of people early in the season I kept saying they're going to regress to the to the norm meaning improve and they have I mean they're they have the sixth highest strikeout rate for a long time they had the highest and so you know they're only at 24.6 percent in terms of their strikeout rate the league average strikeout rate is 22.7 percent so it's like two percentage points a little less than that 1.9 percentage points above average in terms of striking out more than average and sixth highest I mean it's just not that much of a concern for me honestly there's some guys like when we look at individual players who have gone through stretches of striking out too much like JD Davis has had some kind of in zone swing and miss issues recently but I don't know I don't think it's It's too much of a concern. How about the walk rate as a team? The Giants have a walk rate of 8.8%, which is 12th highest in baseball. I would have hoped and expected that maybe they would be a little bit higher in this category. I think some of the young players, when we look at like a Casey Schmidt, some of these free swinging young players have skewed the numbers a little bit. Like Lamont Wade Jr. has done an excellent job with walking. And so it's one of those things where you're just looking at the team as a whole, but you do have individual players who are doing really well in terms of like not chasing and all that. Isolated power, which is slugging minus batting average. We already looked at the slugging and the batting average, so this should come in right around league average. And sure enough, the Giants are right in the middle-ish at with a 159 isolated power. League average is 162. I think when you account for the ballpark and the fact that home runs are still tough there. The ballpark is kind of neutral, but that's when we factor in that doubles and triples happen more at Oracle Park, especially triples, than the average team. And But far fewer homers still happen at Oracle Park. There's no doubt it's still not a homer-friendly ballpark. So that's factored in here. How about the average on balls in play? This is an interesting one. It's gone kind of up and down for the Giants this year, but they are seventh highest with a 307 batting average on balls in play the league average is 297 so that's one area where they have outperformed the league average by a significant amount the home run total they have hit the 13th most home runs so again that's kind of impressive given that oracle park is a tough place to hit homers so they're an above average home run hitting team and stolen bases is one more thing we can look at 41 steals the second fewest So the steal hasn't really been a major part of the Giants game this year, for sure. The Cincinnati Reds are first with 112. So the Giants have scored, you know, 
almost three or not scored stolen almost three times fewer bases than the Cincinnati Reds and the Giants are going to go there on this opening second half road trip and so that's something to certainly keep in mind in terms of base running and we'll get to defense in a second uh, the Giants rank seventh with according to fan graphs 4.9 runs above average on the bases and that's not that's the thing base running isn't just stolen bases and it's good that we calculate this I think a lot of people don't really think about base running too much but it's like not making outs on the bases basically and not just that, but going, being able to go first to third, being able to go first to home, second to home, all that is kind of calculated into this number. And did I say that's the seventh highest mark in baseball? And of course, 0.0 is going to be average. And the Giants, again, five runs above average on the bases. But the defense, the defense is really something I want to focus on here before we get into the individual players who make all of this up. And it was such a problem last year, but the defense has, as I kind of said it would be, I thought I said they could be at least average, but they have been better than that. And we'll get into what's going on, what do the numbers say in just a minute. But before we do, this episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs, which are my absolute favorite pair of shorts, hands down, no question about it. They've got stretch khaki shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and give you a truly sculpted look and they do the exact same thing as lululemon but fit way better and they fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff restricting cotton i cannot stand uh regular khaki shorts i don't know about you but that stiff stiff restricting cotton is a thing of the past and with bird dogs you can get the the look of khaki with the comfort of shorts that you would want to wear around the house And the versatility means you can wear them to work, you can wear them around the house, you can wear them out with friends, you can wear them to a job interview. That is what uh, Bird Dogs provides. And if you go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnMLB uh, or enter promo code LockedOnMLB, excuse me, you will get a free Yeti-style tumbler. I've got mine right here. If you're listening, there it is. And if you're watching, you can see it. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB or promo code locked on MLB for this free Yeti style tumbler. And you won't want to take your bird dogs off. I promise you. All right, here we go. We are going to get into the Giants defense in 2023. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every dayers tomorrow on the show, we're going to get back into some mailbag questions. I've got a lot left over. Chat GPT4, selecting the order of the mailbag, mailbag questions. Always a lot of fun to have Chat GPT4 kind of uh, get involved with Locked on Giants. So, yes, getting back to the, you know, evaluating the Giants overall, we are going to look at defense and Later on, we're going to look at the individual players. Actually, during this bit of the show, we're going to get into the individual players defensively, and then we'll also talk about individual players offensively as base runners, etc. But the Giants, Fangraphs does this metric called, it's if you're on Fangraphs and, it, and you see DEF, I think a lot of people think it's defensive war, but it's not. It's it, DEF is defensive runs above average, and it's part of the war calculation, but it's not defensive war and so the giants are at 6.4 runs above average and what this number does is it not just looks at it is that it doesn't just look at excuse me the uh like how good you are but it also does a positional adjustment and so if you're a good defensive shortstop that is far more valuable than being a good defensive first baseman and so being an average shortstop might have the same value as being, you know, defensive value as being a good defensive first baseman. So there, it's kind of complicated a little bit, but the Giants come in third, like I said, with 6.4 runs above average. And so that is tremendous. I mean, if we look at last season, I believe the Giants were last in this category. They were certainly in the bottom three or so. And by outs above average, I think the Giants were... Again, I don't remember. In some numbers, they were last, like defensive runs saved maybe. 
But this year, by outs above average, the Giants are fifth with 12 outs above average. And so this is a stat cast metric, and it's it's a good one. It might be kind of the considered the most accurate defensive metric. Part of what's great about defense uh, outs above average, excuse me, by stat cast is that it's totally objective because it's just using StatCast as like the cameras that are in the stadiums and it's looking at where did you start, where did you finish, how hard, you know, how long did you have to get there? And it's able to compare all the players in the league and say, uh, how often does that play get made? And yeah, so it's, it's more objective than kind of a human. And so obviously we use our eyes as well, but... I mean, no surprise, and, and I was beating this drum all offseason long, but Tyro Estrada is the Giants' top performer by outs above average with plus nine. And yeah, I said all offseason long that this guy was not a bad defender. There was one number, defensive run saved, that wasn't high on Estrada's season last year, and I think a lot of people were like, Estrada is not a good defender, but he has been this season. And, and think about it, like he has not made many mistakes out there at all. Obviously, he's hurt right now, but... That's huge. And that goes into, you know, talking about something like wins above replacement. Defense is factored in in a major way because and fielding percentage is something that we should all just completely forget about. It's unfortunate that still when you watch television broadcasts or whatever, they often refer to a team's defense and say this team is leading the league in defense or is worst in defense. I think the Giants have the most errors or at least they did pretty deep into the season. But that is not the way to evaluate defense, and I can I could do a whole episode just ranting about why fielding percentage is not great for evaluating defense, but it should be kind of obvious, especially with like outfielders. It doesn't take range into account at all. It just takes into account, did you make an error? So you could have a super slow guy out there in the outfield, and as long as they don't make any errors, you could say, oh, they're a great defender by fielding percentage, but... You could have an elite runner out there who gets to a ball that the other guy had no chance to get to, and he drops it, and you call it an error, and you say, that guy's a worse defender, even though the other guy had no chance to even get there. So that's one of the main problems, is range is not considered by fielding percentage at all. But it is totally, it's one of the, it's probably the biggest factor in these other metrics. So J.D. Davis comes in second with plus six outs above average, which is incredible given his reputation as a below average defender but he just hasn't been the eye test verifies this as well he's just been a different guy out there than he was earlier in his career and even last season with the Giants Brandon Crawford plus three outs above average Mike Yastrzemski plus two David Villar plus two I mean we can just go down the list pretty much not many guys in the in the negative here. Michael Conforto minus three. That checks out to me, and it's about range. He just doesn't. He's not moving great out there. He he just seems like his hips are tight or something, but his uh, speed and range just doesn't look great to me. So that you know, but minus three is not a huge negative number. He's been solid, like making the plays that he should make, but just not moving great. Wilmer Flores minus two. That kind of checks out to me as well. Mitch Hanniger minus two. Casey Schmidt at minus two, a bit of a surprise here. Kind of a small sample for Schmidt. Also, Wade Jr. at minus two, a little bit of a surprise. Jock Peterson minus one. Blake Sable only minus one. And that's only, I don't think this is counting catchers, For by the way, for Blake Sable. So that's just as an outfielder. I would expect Sable, he doesn't look like he moves great to me either, to be a little more negative. Luis Matos at zero. Austin Slater at zero. Anyway, so... There are other metrics we could look at, defensive runs saved, et cetera, but I'm, I'm just going with outs above average because it, to me it's kind of my preferred number to evaluate a defense. So coming up in just a minute, we are going to look at the individual players, the mix of veterans and youth, including some surprising youth and a, a big deal at the catcher position in this first half with the emergence of Patrick Bailey. So how has he done both at the plate and behind it? What do the numbers say? We'll get into it in just a minute. But before we do, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, 
therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. And I can attest to this from personal experience. I have been through so many different things, to be honest with you, that have been very difficult. And my tendency, I don't know if you know this about me, is to kind of retreat inward and not seek out help. And I have kind of lived in this way for years and and frankly, like made the decision to seek out help at times. And it has made just an absolute world of difference. And so if you're thinking of starting therapy, I would encourage you very much to just give it a try. And where you can go is better help because it's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just need to fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MLB and you can get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on MLB. All right, here we go. We're going to get into the individual players. There's a mix of youth and veterans and including, you know, it's a mixed bag, like guys we didn't expect and the performance has been kind of mixed. And so it's going to be really interesting to break it down. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day, every day or tomorrow. Getting to more mailbag questions as selected by chat GPT4, which is a lot of fun. I think it does a pretty good job of selecting the questions, but I'll make sure as I look through them. But let's just ju- jump into like the individual players who make all of this up. Now that we've said the Giants are ninth overall in Fangraph's wins above replacement, we've looked at the kind of broken down the offense on all these different levels, average on base slugging. We've looked at base running. We've looked at defense. And what? who makes it up? Like who are the players who make this up? And coming in at number one by a hefty margin in terms of the most productive or valuable position player this is you know war is a counting stat meaning the more you play the more chances you have to accumulate it and so someone like Patrick Bailey who we'll get to in a minute is high on this list but he also has a lot less playing time and so if he had played more maybe he's number one but he's not number one because he hasn't you know he has less than half of the plate appearances of this next guy Tyro Estrada with 2.6 Fangraphs wins above replacement is has been the Giants best position player according to Fangraphs. Just by the way, pulling up the leaderboard in terms of wins above replacement, number 1 in the National League is Ronald Acuña Jr. with 4.8 Fangraphs wins above replacement. So Estrada at 2.6 uh, comes in at 26th highest in major league baseball so it's not like super high but it is also not a low number if we look at in the national league it's the 13th highest total so that's a pretty good number for Estrada and it just demonstrates why his absence kind of hurts the Giants but he does it he's only been about eight percent above average offensively according to you know weighted runs created plus but four base running runs above average and 8.3 defensive runs above average. And again, keep in mind, this is factoring in the position that he plays as well. And so add it all up and it's about two and a half wins above a replacement level player, according to Fangraphs. J.D. Davis, number two at 1.9. Fangraphs wins above replacement. Lamont Wade Jr. also at 1.9. And so those two guys, kind of these veteran, I think Farhan Zaidi said it, the other day, but it was like, he he said the young veterans or like the younger veterans have had a big role in the, the, the fact that the Giants are 49 and 41. And he mentioned Davis and Lamont Wade and Yastrzemski, who's at 1.5 fan graphs wins above replacement, but only 233 plate appearances. He's missed some time, but been productive when he's been out there. So those three guys, Davis, Wade, and Yastrzemski, a huge part of what the Giants have done this season. And the other veterans, though, like the the players that they signed, Michael Conforto has been relatively disappointing. He's been very streaky, very cold to start the season. Then he got very hot. Then he got very cold again. And he seemed to be getting hot again right as the first half kind of closed against the Rockies there. 
So hopefully he's able to keep that going despite the layoff. He has been extremely streaky, like automatic out when he's been cold and just like an automatic hard hit ball when he's been hot. But, you know, you've got your other guys, plenty of guys kind of performing two expectations. Blake Sable has been uh, above average offensively. I haven't certainly loved his work behind the plate. I think he's uh, he's solid at framing, but the blocking and pass balls and stuff have been kind of an issue. Mitch Hanniger, obviously, he struggled a lot, and then he got hurt. And so he's been, you know, not like kind of a non-factor. And hopefully in the month of September, he can be a factor. Casey Schmidt has come up and, and generally struggled at the plate. I mean, definitely too much chase out of Casey Schmidt. And the numbers bear it out. 62 weighted runs created plus about 40% below MLB average. David VR, another young player who just disappointed and and got sent down. Joey Bart, you know, he's kind of become a forgotten player here. Luis Matos, Joey Bart struggled again, 63 weighted runs created plus. That's David VR and Joey Bart and Casey Schmidt all have been about 40% below average when they've played this year offensively. Luis Matos has held his own at 85 weighted runs created plus with the expected numbers much higher than that, I think he's hit a lot of balls hard to left field that have just kind of been tracked down in the alley. So hopefully with more playing time, he's 21 years old. And so the fact that he's holding his own to me, I, I think of all the players so far that I've mentioned who are young players, uh, Matos is probably the guy I'm most optimistic about. But let's discuss Patrick Bailey. His emergence has been key, absolutely key for the San Francisco Giants this first half and projecting forward because like I said Joey Bart struggled again at the plate and Patrick Bailey came up very surprisingly he wasn't on a lot of people's radars as a guy who could come up and make a impact at the major league level but man has he done that 293 average 324 on base 493 slugging a 120 weighted runs created plus and this is the catcher position that just there aren't a lot of there isn't a lot of great offense out there at the catcher position. It's a you know the the league average catcher is significantly worse than the league average overall hitter offensively. But Bailey has hit. He's been clutch. He's had some huge late game heroics. The expected numbers are even better than the actual numbers offensively. Three seventy five average on balls in play is going to come down, but. He just looks the part switch hitting. He's actually done well from the right side, which people thought was a real liability for him as a switch hitter, the right side. And defensively, he's been a revelation. If we all the numbers bear it out and the eye test bears it out as well. In terms of framing, he's been basically like one of the top framers in Major League Baseball, according to the numbers over on Baseball Savant, which is using the data from the box, you know, the strike zone box. He gets a lot of called strikes on borderline pitches, and he's also been a very good thrower and kind of pop time player in terms of how quick does he, from the time the ball hits his glove to the time the ball arrives at second base on a steal attempt, he's been a top three player in that category as well. The blocking hasn't been the greatest, but that's probably the least important of these attributes. And so he's been tremendous at throwing out runners. He's thrown out high profile runners in high profile situations. Mookie Betts, Fernando Tatis Jr. Mookie Betts, that was a huge moment. And then Starling Marte, Mets hadn't been thrown out on the bases in like two months or something. Yeah, yeah, it it had been like a month and a half. And in huge situations, he's just been calm. He has the trust of the pitching staff, confident. And he looks like he's here to stay. And so maybe probably I think the best story for the Giants in the first half of the season was the emergence of Patrick Bailey. And so anyway, that is all the time we have. That's my kind of 30-ish minute summary of the Giants first half on in their position player group, which has been overall a real positive with some ups and downs, young players, some of them not performing. Mitch Hanniger and Michael Conforto being relatively disappointing. Conforto, I I still believe in. Hanniger, I still believe in, but he's out until September. But so nothing major there. But yeah, that's that's my summary.
as of right now. Anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow, mailbag, and then the next day, pitchers. We're going to evaluate the Giants pitching, which is very unorthodox, and it's going to be fun to get into it on Friday. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please rate it or leave a review. It helps me out a lot, so thanks in advance, and thank you to everyone who's done so already. Can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening today. You are now Locked on Giants.